category respecting nature and environment sub category wildlife this vlog narrates the epic tale of tiger conservation in india it looks at the historical oppression of tigers and examine how the situation has now changed making india a glowing example of success in wildlife conservation years why we must respect nature and how you can be a part of a greater cause today India is home to 70% of the global tiger population and is a model to strive for other nations. Through the constant, relentless and intensive efforts from the multiple facets of the society from the government communities to the innumerable and impeccable NGOs and even the multitudes of good-natured Samaritans. Thus, Today due to all the efforts by everybody the princes of the wild can have their dance in the purple rain and the royal bengal tigers rule over its ancestral territories of the marshes and swampland of bengal but one can easily forget the inhuman past in blinding brilliance of today's glory and one can be ignorant of the centuries of cruelty and ruthless hunting that led to near extinction of that glorious beast from the face of the subcontinent india's tiger have been in the crosshairs for centuries with elite safaris dating back to the early 16th century they rose out of mughal emperor jalaluddin mohammad akbar's passion for big game He began a tradition of royal hunting or shikar that was carried on by Mughal rural until the dynasty fell in 1857. During the great glory days of the great Mughal empire the hunts were an elaborate and grand event that often lasted several days if not weeks and involved the cooperative efforts of the entire staff and security of the throne and that led to tremendous scale of destruction of the natural flora and fauna paintings from the period depict mogul rajput turk and afghan nobility hunting from elephant or horseback these outings were considered an exotic heroic sport and tigers were the ultimate trophies When the British replaced the Mughals at the throne of the Delhi and effectively extended their rule over the entire subcontinent they continued the barbaric tradition an activity that showcased their royalty machismo power and wealth they took out tigers with reckless abandon along with their india counterparts that ruled soviet the princely states kings and lords generals and maharajans went out in large parties carried by elephants the servant often dragged and baited tiger before they arrived so the hunters were in little danger they legitimized the slaughter by vilifying the cats casting them as terrible bloodthirsty beast with an unquenchable desire for human flesh according to historian mahesh rangarajan over 80000 tigers were slaughtered in 50 years from 1875 to 1925 it is possible that this was only a fraction of the number actually slain not all were trophy hunted in some regions the cat were considered vermin systematically exterminated with an incentive from government bounties the midnight sun of our independence saw a whole new wave of prospective hunters and smugglers now free from the colonial oppression the poor the needy and often times the greedy had the entire field open to them a free for all tiger hunt where your only barrier was your on fear and then as the models and hollywood starlets draped themselves in cat skin coats a fashion craze for fur took hold in the US and Europe a tiger pelt fetched for 50 dollars in india during the 1950s 
Ten years later, rugs and coats were sold for ten thousand dollars. When the conversionist Annie Wright explored markets in Delhi, where shells were grown with skins, she found that the vast majority lacked proper permits and were being exported. In a truly revolutionary step, the then Prime Minister Indira Gandhi, amongst growing fear about the rapidly declining tiger population, launched Project Tiger, which still stands as the world's most comprehensive tiger conservation initiative. Within the Project Tiger initiative, she established nine tiger hotspots as reserve, hired guards to patrol them, and ensured security. She also moved many natives from the indigenous land. She not only spearheaded a fight against the growing tiger crisis, outlawing the export of skin, but also appointed a tiger task force two years later. But before she could be in a position of power great enough to take some decisive steps in the matter, thousands of tigers were killed in elaborate hunts by. Indian and British nobility before hunting was outlawed by Indian government in 1971. There are innumerable great NGOs working selflessly to protect these animals. Too many actually to name all here, but a couple of the really special one include Tract India. The Tiger Research and Conservation Trust established in 2001. This NGO specializes in protecting the predator and prey beyond the walls of the mark protected territories. Not all the tigers living currently in the country fall neatly inside the wall of these protected reserves and so are still vulnerable to the hunters. Track makes sure that a peaceful and continued collaboration between local communities and large carnivores in buffer forest and forested corridors. Track works for minimizing human large carnivore conflict, often preempting the threats and preventing conflict issue before they can occur. We work to sensitize these people to the causes of wildlife conflict through educating them on simple changes. Which bring about a decrease or even a complete halt to the conflict situation. The Wildlife Protection Society of India (WPSI) was founded in 1994 by Belinda Wright, its executive director, who was an award-winning wildlife photographer and filmmaker till she took up the cause of conservation from its inception. WPSI's main aim has been to bring a new focus to the daunting task of tackling India's growing wildlife crisis. It does this by providing support and information to the government authorities to combat poaching and the escalating illegal wildlife trade, particularly in wild tigers. It has now broadened its focus to deal with human-animal conflict and provide support for research projects. A few other stellar NGOs that deserve at least a quick mention are Prol, an NGO set up by a man with cerebral palsy and his wife, and Tired Earth, who are also fighting for the whole wider climate changes issues. The spectre of a world without tigers led 13 nations to meet in 2010 in Saint Petersburg, Russia, where they declared that they would double the tiger count by 2022. But all except India, Nepal, and Bhutan are struggling to save their tigers, even in the protected reserves. The cumulative efforts of all the NGOs. And the government bodies working on this have finally paid off. Now, according to the official numbers, the tiger population has doubled from 1,411 in 2006 to 2,967 today, meaning 
that India has met the St. Petersburg's target. Through looking at just the numbers and the figure, one is inclined to think of the entire situation as an absolute win. But as it happens throughout the history, the truth often avoids simplicity. Many environmental enthusiasts have questioned the accuracy and the limitacy of the numbers as well as their collection methodologies. The critics have argued the legitimacy of the official census. As in 2018, they added additional survey sites and a bunch of new cameras. They say that these type of differences make it difficult to compare the data with the past and thus disprove the entire results. Another point of contention is the data analysis, particularly the calibration model used to arrive at the pan-India numbers. The description of the methodology and the models used is vague, and the resulting numbers have higher uncertainties than are reported, says Arjun Gopal Swami, a statistical ecologist and Swai. advisor at the wildlife conservation society in new york city he has authored two studies critiquing the census method both the studies are really extensive and are really interesting reads current indian prime minister shri narendra modi declared that tiger conservation could go hand in hand with building roads railways and homes he has also celebrated a set 33% increase in the population post 2014 today finally after centuries of ruthless and merciless killing the tigers of the indian subcontinent get roam peacefully once again and as the numbers keeps on increasing the model for conservation gains more and more credibility common of categorizes organization who fight to conserve nature and the planet under wildlife subcategory of nature and environment to help the youth connect to the organization that fight for this cause if you like this video and commenters believe that we must conserve the planet like and subscribe to our channel for more content on the similar cause and more